Greetings. I'm very excited today because I'm starting a new tarot journey. And this time, just like I did with the Wildwood Tarot, but this time I'm going to go with going through the deck, the Book of the Dead Tarot, the Santa Muerte deck. I first saw this deck at uh, the Hermit's Cave channel over at Simon's channel. Um, he did a flip through and I want to apologize before I start. Um, you know, I'm not the best with my lighting here, so you might not be able to see the images so well. So I, I ask you, I'll link to his channel here. You can go over and find, I'll try to find the, the video link to it. If you're not familiar with the deck, it's a beautiful deck. And um, I'm really, really excited about working with it. Um, you might be a little surprised that I'm beginning now because if you know my channel, you know that I very much like to walk the wheel of the year. I like to go through the wheel slowly and I like to very much enjoy each Sabbath while we were in it. As we go through season from season to season, um, I like to stay in the season and here we are still not even to Maybon yet. We are short of a couple weeks short of Maybon. Um, and <laughs> Samhain is yet to come after that. And so we're going to be talking about Excuse me, Samhain is really the time when we get to, we start to do work with our ancestors because of the celebration of the Dia de los Muertos, um, or the Day of the Dead, which is the day after Samhain. Um, so why am I starting now? Why am I starting now? I'm, well, you could, some of you might think it's very natural that they start now because I know a lot of you are already doing a lot of um, videos showing some of your Halloween and Samhain purchases. A lot of you really get into that the season. And I know this is when you buy it because this is when the stores have it. So I will probably be doing the same thing. But I want to say, the reason I have for this is not, I'm not jumping the season. Is that I want to be able to connect with this deck. I'd like to get a good jump on this deck so that by the time, um, the appropriate time of the year when we are, when I am doing the work with the ancestors, um... This is a good way to communicate. I need to understand the deck. I need to say, okay, I, I get it now. I'm starting to get it because I'm just now starting to get the Wildwood. It's been a while since I've been working with the Wildwood and it's really helped me, these little exercises that I've done. And I thought it might help me with this deck. And if some of you didn't not like the Wildwood deck, you might like the Santa Muerte deck. But again, these are exercises that I do that you can do with decks that you purchase too. Or if you're just learning for the first time, it's a good way to do it. But um, some of these exercises that I have here. But anyway, I'm putting this on the playlist for several reasons. Now the reason I'm putting it on the playlist is I have been warned by several people since I started talking about this deck that this was really an evil deck and that the Catholic Church has put out dire warnings against working with Santa Muerte in any way. Now I think they do not mean the tarot deck. I think they mean... Um, that some cults of, let's say, some groups of people are worshipping the saint, Santa Muerte herself, as we worship the other, God, we worship goddesses. Um, some of them are worshipping her, um, just as they would be wa worshipping um, Our Lady Guadalupe. They would be wa worshipping... Um, uh, La, Santa, La Santa Muerta. Now, La Santa Muerta. Now, I want to say this. Um, the Catholic Church and a lot of people are claiming that there's a lot of evil and that this is satanic worship, etc. Well, I know that everybody, if you're watching my channel, you know that's nonsense. I'm not saying that some people do not worship Satan, and I'm not saying that some people might be using um, Santa Muerte as a symbol of their satanic worship, just like some people have taken the pentacle and made that into a um, symbol for worshiping whatever the devil, whatever they're worshiping. Um, but to me, it means something entirely different. And to me, connecting with a tarot deck means something entirely different. And connecting with um, the ancestors means something entirely different. It has nothing to do with Satan worship. Now, um, 
this is another thing that some people might can you know um, question the idea of cultural appropriation the card taking something that is belonging to one culture and using it in another culture that sometimes we're criticized for doing some of these things um, we witches do this because that's the way witches fly but I was working today with this symbol I don't know if you see I have it on my wrist right now this is an ankh which is the Egyptian symbol for life and I had this because when I was doing my reading I had this laid out on my on my table here with my cards and it was not as a mean of protection it was a means because it was a symbol to me that meant a lot because the point of worshiping the dead and the ancestral dead the point of communicating with the, the ancestral dead uh, to the people who created this if you want to say created this first did it to the culture they did it and I think we're talking um, I'm talking I'm speaking specifically of the Mexican culture because this is where I live I have you know I live in a cul-de-sac this is just an aside but I do live in a cul-de-sac and there are six houses in the cul-de-sac of the six houses that live that are in this cul-de-sac there are two houses one is mine where English is the first language in the home the other four are completely full pretty full of Mexican people that's the way that this neighborhood is really and my whole neighborhood is very diverse and very many um, very ethnic, ethnically diverse uh, mostly Hispanic but other representing other um, people as well with other ethnicities um, I this is this is what I like about my neighborhood it was like that when we when we moved here in 1979 and it's why we still live here today I I very much like living in this in this um, in this atmosphere in this you know it's a very rich way to live by getting to know each other's uh, cultures learning things about each other's cultures benefits us all and so I have found a lot of great rich 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 you know ideas from uh, the Mexican people in my neighborhood and this is something that, that all, in all of Southern California, this the Day of the Dead celebrations are very big. They're very big. You can't help it for, for it to become a part of you. You can't help it. Unless you just don't go outside. <laughs> Unless you just don't mingle with your neighbors at all. So I found it very, I just have always had a love for it. In tarot, it means something even entirely, it's an even richer, um, A richer way to read for me you know when I was I was for years so loyal to the right away to my employee deck and I still am I'm loyal to them but you know there were a couple years ago I was pretty smart and telling you even on this channel well I don't need all those other decks I am I'm I'm good I'm good with the right away this way below deck has served me for all these years and it can serve me for, you know, 40 some years. It'll serve me for 40 more years. And I really believed that. And I believed I didn't need much more until I started looking into some, a few other decks. And I started to say, how is this a little different? Because why are there so many decks? Why are there so many decks? They're, they're different because they each have a little bit of a twist. Each has some little lesson, some little new way of looking at something. as a new perspective. And we always can use a new perspective. And so, just like the Wildwood, and the journey I took through the Wildwood, and I'm still doing, taking through the Wildwood, showed me a little difference in some of the cards. It's not easy to say, you know, the Five of Cups is always is what the Five of Cups means. In each deck, there's a different emphasis placed on special, maybe a special way of looking at the Five of Cups. And that's what I'm interested in learning in this journey. That's how I connect with cards. And by the time that we celebrate, I celebrate with my ancestor altar. And I do the communications with my ancestors and really try to see the messages that I'm receiving with my, from my ancestors. 
I want to use my card. So I really want to be ready. So that's what I'm doing, okay? If you're interested, please follow along with me. I'm going to do the same kind of thing that I did before. I'm going to just draw three cards. I'm going to look at the cards. I'm going to compare them a little bit to the card to the Rider weight. And partly because that is a good thing because I have that meeting in my head. I've said that before. That when I think of a, you know, a two of cups, I always think of a certain thing because of the Rider weight. But what is the twist? What is something different? Tell me something different. Tell me something different. Tell me why I want this deck instead of the other. There was a really cool thing. There's a little book that comes with the deck. And um, it talks about the perspective of the of the deck. And remember I said, even this is not your Bible. These are not your Bibles. But when you get a new deck, you do need to look at the book because you, this is where you're going to see. Where's the author coming from? Where's the author coming from with this deck? Why is, why is this deck being presented in the first place? There's usually a reason. And you need to find out what that is before you try to read them. There's a beautiful little quote in the very beginning of this little book that says, it's from who Austin Osman Spare, who says, the dead are reborn and lie again in the belly of the conscience. And I love that little quote because that really is sort of reminiscent of what we hear in the Wildwood Tarot, where we are celebrating the Wildwood Tarot, that ancestral knowledge that is in nature that we find in the in the rocks that have had the water running over them for hundreds and thousands of years and then you know the and the trees that have grown and connect under the ground and you know and um, season in weather season after season after season and and then you know all of the elements are alive and all of the animals in the wild wood and all of the wise people in the wild wood all have lessons to teach us and they have lessons that the ancestors learned from them and so they are this it's sort of this ancestral knowledge that's being passed on to us in this deck it's not just ancestral knowledge it's not just you know remembering and celebrating our ancestors that went before us this is something a little bit more okay um, in this deck there actually is when they have the little meaning beside each card like they do they'll have a little like a suggested meaning for each card um, and the meanings you know there's no there's no neg there's no negative there's no reversals really listed in this at all but it's pretty obvious from the beginning that um, just like in I think of the real way to read the tarot is in every card there is both positive and negative in every card some of them are a little more negative than others they're a little more positive than others but nothing is black and white just as in life, nothing is black and white. But what I like about this, following that little paragraph, instead of keywords, it's like a little paragraph. And it's not like a big thing that you have to read, like in the Wild Witch Herald. It's just a short paragraph. And then at the after it, after it comes the advice of the dead. The advice of the dead. And each of these cards has advice from the dead, a message from the ancestors having to do with the subject of the card, which I really liked a lot. Um, anyway, this, this deck, um, the, and if you know, I want, before we get into the deck, I just have to say one more thing. If you know the whole meaning, um, if we look at the meanings behind why we, I think if you look at some of my old videos, I might, I could link them. I guess I could put the link to some of them, but I talked about, um, Dia de los Muertos. You know, I I gone to my husband and I, and I went to um, Olvera Street a couple years ago for the celebrations there. I did a two day video there, kind of long, but trying to show you, trying to show everybody, share with you. Um, at the time, I said, you know, it's death. The way that they they celebrate death by laughing at death. There's a lot of comedy that goes with death you know, with the speaking of death, they, it's like, it's not so fearful if you can make fun of it. It's not so fearful. Well, in this book, in little book, it talks about, it's not, that's just not all it is. When you talk about Santa Muerte, we talk about, um, the fact that, um,
we talk about people that, you know, a lot of people are poor or there's, a, you know, if you have people that are poor or, or powerless in their station or whatever, you know, there, we, every, all of our cultures, no matter what kind of culture we have, where we come from, there's some kind of a hierarchy that everybody has. There's the people, you know, that control everything and the power and the rich and, you know, whatever. It, you either control by blood or historically or you control by who your family is or by, you know, how much money you have or how much power you have. And it dwindles down, dwindles down to the people on the bottom or the people that are, you know, poor or people that are ill or people that are a minority in another way. They might be a minority or they might be you know, old or sick or young, you know, they are powerless. They don't have the power. There's always a hierarchy. And in this deck, it celebrates the fact that, yes, there's always a hierarchy, but in one, but in one, and that is with death. And in death, we are all equal. No one escapes death. You can die and have a great funeral, or you can die and be thrown into a common grave. But dead is dead. You're so dead. You're so dead. So it's a great equalizer. Okay. So, um, it's talking about the lessons that we can learn from death, from death. And in this deck, and Simon will show you, the one thing that is very cool about this deck, the one difference, one of the differences, every one of the tens, this is the Ten of Swords. Is the picture is a butterfly. There's the Ten of Swords. Let me can find another one here. Um, these are just such a great cards. I just, oh, I love these cards so much. I really, oh, if you want a new deck, I really recommend this deck. Oh, here, here's the Ten of Pentacles. I hope you can see it. See, it's a butterfly. They're colored differently. And there's some different things in the, you know, of, of surrounding. Um, here we go. Uh -huh. Oh, well, I don't know if I can see anymore or not. Did you get the picture? You know, I guess I don't have to find them all for you to believe me. <laughs> you, of course, will believe me. Here we have the Ten of Wands. All the same. And since I found those, and that's kind of the way I am, I have to find the other one just because I have to complete it. <laughs> there we go, thank goodness. It's End of Cups. Okay. And what I love about that is because 10 is the end of one, the end of one life and the beginning of another life. And we saw that in, oh, just in the Wildwood. I just did a reading with the Wildwood where we had um, the Ten of, uh, I think it was the Ten of Swords, Ten of Swords being represented, yes, the man was lying there on the ground with, no, it wasn't the Ten of Swords, oh, no, it wasn't the Ten of Swords, it was the Four of Swords. There's a lot of, anyway, there's a lot of the, that kind of thing in the Wildwood Tarot too. But anyway, I thought that was really cool. Anyway, we have to get on with it. I don't want to talk too much. What I did, let me take a drink. My tea. I have no idea if this is a long video or a short video because I've been sitting in here so long trying to do it with all the interruptions. But just like I did in the Wild Wood Tarot, I made a three-card draw. And if you're new to this, a chew... Uh, how I do these to the to the um, this kind of a play this kind of a series on on my channel. What I do is I draw three cards. I try to do it. I'm trying to try to do it every week. I don't publicize it every week because I just can't do that. I'll try to do it a little more often since we have a window. We're trying to learn as much as we can about this deck uh, before we get into the Dia de los Muertos. But um, I draw three cards, lay them out, not really representing anything particular, present, present, future, anything, just how they relate to each other. Excuse me. Um, I give up trying to say 
it is not a reading because I've learned the hard way. There is no way I can draw cards out of this deck that they are do not apply to either me or who is with me in the room. It just doesn't happen. I can't just pull random cards. Because when I pull these cards immediately, I knew they were mine. <laughs> I don't need to share why, but I knew they were mine. Okay. So anyway, I pull three cards. And I'm going to first of all look at each card. And look at this, its um, companion card in the Rider Waite system. To see what differences, if any, there are. Because that way I can relate to the card better. Okay. So I pull the Three of Swords and we're all first... And we're all aware, first of all, this is the Three of Swords in my Hoi Polloi deck. Um, which we all, I think we all are familiar with this. This represents, there's three swords going through this heart. And it usually represents some kind of loss or some kind of jealousy or some kind of, you know, um, maybe there's a misunderstanding, maybe there's a, you know, an argument or it's not a, it's not severe enough that it's, going to change your life because it's, remember, it's just the minor arcana, but it's something to watch out for because it's a little, you know, what do they say? Um, death is in the details, I guess, but you know, it's, it's, um, we need to pay attention because it's a little stuff that'll, that'll bring us down, a little stuff will bring us down. So, um, the three of swords. Now, very interesting, but it's, I liked it that it was in the heart. This is breaking your heart, piercing your heart, the expression piercing your heart, um, stab me in the heart, that feeling of, oh, separation or loss, grief. In the Book of the Dead, the Santa Muerte, the Three of Hearts, and I hope you can see it. If not, again, I'm going to remind you. I'm going to remind you, oh, I'm going to remind you that what I do in this series is, this is where I was trying to tell you what I forgot. I down the cards, three cards. I'll talk to you here on this video a little bit about the cards. I will then give the cards some thought. I'll mull it over on the weekend. And by the beginning of the week, sometime, I will post on my website, my blog on my website at birdandthecrown.com. Just a short little give you a conclusion about the three cards and what I think the cards were really trying to say to me. It's the combination, just remember, if the, in the rest of my tarot series here on this playlist, what I say, it holds true in this, in this exercise as well. It is not the single card. These are not, these cards are not representing three separate things to me. They might, but what the message is, is what is coming through as the message is how do these cards relate, work together as the story. This is a story of three cards. It's a message. It's a letter. It's a telegram. It's whatever you want it to be. It's an episode on Netflix, but it's all one. Okay? Not three different things. All one. So I want to look at the cards together, what I think they're saying together. And then I will write that on birdandthecrown.com. I'll put a link on the video. On this video. That's fun. That's oh, my active. Thank you. <laughs> um, I overreacted, didn't I? Anyway, um, you'll be able to see the picture clearer when you see it on, on that, on my blog. I put it on this featured photograph and then also I will link that if you don't if you forget if you if you are on Facebook on my page bird in the crone you will also see I will post it up there I'll put the link there too anyway <laughs> on with my reading on with my review the three of sorts in the Santa Muerte deck if you can see if not I'll go to Simon. You go to Simon and you can see it there too. Um, it's two skeletons. I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to tell you what is happening here. The first, the skeleton, there's a skeleton sitting on top of the, uh, one is kneeling down on the ground. The other one is sitting on top, his feet on his back, and he is sitting on the head. He's sitting on the head of the one on the ground. The skeleton on the bottom is very 
has his attention on a sword, a bloody sword that he has apparently pulling out of his leg. It has been in his leg. There's blood on the ground. And he's worrying about that. And while he's worrying about that, the skeleton on top of him is piercing him in the back with the other two swords. Okay. It is the act of being stabbed in the back. And just like we have the expression, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. We have this expression that somebody stabbed me in the back. Now, it could be in the past, it could be in the future, but think about it in the future. If we think about it in the future tense, it is something that is your being warned. It's a, you can consider it a warning from your ancestors. Considering your ancestors that you need to be on guard. Be on guard because something that, some idea, some idea, remember the swords represented an idea or some new kind of a whatever, a strategy or something you're going to do. Um, you need to be very careful because it could work against us. It could cause loss. It could cause conflict. It could, you know, it could cause all these things that we were talking about here. But it's caused by the action, the idea. It's caused by the idea. You get a good idea, but it's not implemented properly. You get in that good idea, but there's no good basis for the idea yet. You get a new idea, um, but something, something about that new idea could really bring us down, could really stab us in the back. It's a warning, or it's telling us that something that we have done and thought of and thought was a good thing really is backfiring, backfiring. Backfiring, backstabbing. Okay, so that's really a cool thing. the The ancestors advise us to use our rational abilities to um, be cautious, be prudent when we make decisions. Anytime we want to face something new, to really give it good thought, give it good consideration. Really, don't be fleeting. Don't be fleeting. Don't be quick. Remember, these ideas can come to us like that. And if we act on it too fast without giving it good thought, it could backfire on us or stab us in the back. Something could happen. Okay, so we need to be, we need to be cognizant of that. The next card is the Five of Pentacles. Oh, and the Five of Pentacles, this is one of these instances where we're going to be a little bit different. We're going to be different in our meanings. If I went and just used the Rider Waite meaning, remember the card here, we have the poor people, the poor, sick, crippled people outside trying to walk through the snow without with one shoe or one leg or whatever, and the other people. And of course, there's the church beside them representing the other way people are, the other, you know, people shelter where they are not in or uh, people help that they have not received, or whatever, by the pentacles. The, you know, the inside at the door and outside the door, inside the building, outside the building, included or excluded. Um, in the position of need or in the position of being able to help. That's one way of looking at this card, but what about this? The Five of Pentacles, this is very different. Look at this. It shows somebody's feet walking along the ground. And the ground is covered with the skulls of the dead. Skulls of people who have been there before. Representing people, or it could just represent, again, situations, it could represent situations. But this card is described in the little book as, I quote, an active dynamic card. And this is not an active dynamic card. That's what I find interesting, first of all. And the card is like, he's, he's trotting, let's call it a man. It could be a man. It could be a woman. But let's call it a man. He's trotting forward. He's walking towards wherever he's going. Maybe he's acted on that idea that I just was talking about in the first card. 
he's acting on an idea but he needs to be really careful here um if he's in excess of being too dynamic or too fit moving too fast could be very um make him unstable you know those skulls underneath them it's like walking if you ever walked on it'd be like walking on marbles <laughs> he tried to walk on marbles um, maybe bigger than marbles, but you know if you try it, you could fall easily if you're not really steady, careful how you put your feet down. They're going to roll around, and you're going to lose your you're going to lose your footing. Okay, and that's what this is about. Just show caution and how you move ahead. Um, and the and the uh, advice coming from the ancestors is, um, you can go ahead. Um, if you're if you're really careful, if you're really careful, and you evaluate the system carefully, and you look to see what you have, what you what do you where are you really putting your feet, remain calm, right? Don't hurry through, don't hurry through, and that's kind of what we were talking about here with the three of swords. These two kind of go together, don't they? All right away, we can see that that they're going together. So when you see when they go together like that, this is not random card. This is what I mean. These are not random cards. This is also guarding against not giving it some thought and having it, you know, backfire or backstab. And here, losing our footing, losing our footing altogether and falling. Um, not being able to proceed. We might not fall, but we're still going to have difficulty moving forward if we don't not sure with our feet, take our time, be calm, be, you know, uh, evaluate where it is best, how the best way to, to proceed. Okay, so those two go together really well. I don't really have to say much about that. And finally, we have the last one. is a major arcana card. And it is the Hanged Man. And in the right away, we know that one. And this is interesting because they're really, I think they're kind of similar. I think they're pretty similar in the way. Um, because here we have the Hanged Man who is, uh, he's in a, a moment of trying to, um, He's waiting, he's waiting, and uh, trying to wait, and he's making a decision, maybe. Um, he might be, uh, might have to give up, up. He, he doesn't know what to do. He's trying to make a decision. He's at a crossroads, crossroads. Try to make a decision. But right now, he's just really happy just staying there, not moving on the situation, not acting. Okay? So, the hanged man for this, for the Santa Muerte. <laughs> it reminds me of the game Hangman. If you ever play the game Hangman. The game Hangman. Um, he's again, he's in meditation. Like here you can see his head is actually separated from his body. Which I think um, where this, the Hangman in the right away has the glowing light around his head where he's contemplating, giving thought to something. This appears when his head is actually separated from his body. To me, it's more of he's separating himself from the physical, his mental, his mind from the physical. So it's more a period of meditation to me, preparing, getting ready in order to um, make his move. Okay. And there might be some He's really um, giving it, you know, a lot of thought. He's completely separating himself, trying to separate himself from the physicalness of the problem um, to try to really think this through, really try to think it out, giving it a lot of, um, a lot of thought. So um, it's also looking at, at bringing, talking about a... Um, the book mentions that it talks about a, a bringing about a new change in perspective, um, which is, is true of the hanged man in the right of way to spell. But um, here it also talks about, in the, the advice from the ancestors, which is different, talks about this is the time to slow down and understand from this new perspective what you think about, what is your aim, what changes you have to make, what might you have to give up. But it mentions slowing down, which I find interesting because that's what this comes from too. So this to me is a very strong message. This is not just three random cards, but it is a very strong message. And I find it interesting because if I would have drawn these three cards from the Rider Waite deck, 
I don't think, I don't think, particularly with the Five of Pentacles, I would have come up with the same ideas that I have now for what these three cards are representing or trying to say to me. So that's what I want you to think about when you're looking at a new deck. I don't want to go into too big of a thing here. I will write a little blurb and put it up on my website, like I said, on my blog. But when you get a new deck, whether it be this deck or any new deck, and you already have knowledge of another deck with the same basis, like a right, if it's another right away deck, you see the danger in just not really looking at the deck, not really examining the deck for what it really is. Because I would have read this, I'm getting an entirely different a different viewpoint than I would have just from the right away. Or if, I don't know if you want me to say Roy Beloy or right away. When I say right away, people are like, well, what right away deck is that? I don't recognize the colors or whatever. That's why I keep saying Hoi Beloy, but then I think I mix more people up. So Anyway, if you like this, please let me know below. I know some of you do not read tarot, so you can skip it. I'll put it in the playlist for those who do. And um, again, check back on my blog. And uh, if you're interested in to see what I write about it, it's going to be something. And also... Um, if you want to see the images a little more careful and check out Simon's channel because he shows you a lot of cool decks if you're looking for a new deck you might get some ideas from his flip throughs because he's got some really really nice decks okay anyway that's all for now uh, thank you for watching thank you for waiting being patient with me while I get through my gardening my gardening season I was doing a lot of canning and things so I wasn't able to come on YouTube for a while so I'm going to try to make up for it. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Rebecca, and as always, I send you blessings.